All right, my name's Ron Cooper. I've been coaching going on my 27th season. Uh, I was uh, an assistant coach for about 18 of those 27 years, and for a little while I was a head coach. So I'm the secondary coach now. I've coached the secondary in the SEC. This is the third school that I've been at. Uh, I'm now the secondary coach here at LSU and uh, looking forward to teach you about press man. Uh, we teach press man in a couple of ways. Uh, we teach press man to where we motor out. We teach press man to where we play bump and run. We're going to talk motor technique and uh, hope you get something out of it. There's one drill that I think is very important. Uh, we call it the shuffle drill. We start off with it every day. Why is the shuffle drill important in teaching bump and run? First of all, we teach them to get in a nice football position. We want a slight bend in the ankles and the knees. We want our nose right over our toes. We teach them to get their cleats in the ground. Feet a little bit further than shoulders width apart. But on this shuffle, I'm the quarterback. I'm the ball. I'm the receiver. And I'm going to push it to the left and to the right. And what that does is it's teaching a defensive back to react. Receivers release. Uh, they don't release on the ball. We don't look at the ball. We look at the man. The man tells you what to do in playing bump and run or press man. So I believe in mirror dodge, being able to put your outside foot in the ground, stick it in plant and go either way. So we'll do a little shuffle drill to where we ask them to keep their feet close to the ground and they're just going to plant off that outside foot and they're going to react to the ball. We start off with this drill every single day and what it does is it teaches our guys, number one, to stay in good football position, number two, react to the coach with the ball, number three, plant off the outside foot. What's important? Don't pick your feet up. Barely graze the grass, barely plant. You can see all of them reacting to me with the ball. I always like working on the line. I think it's important that we work on the line in every single drill. But you can see these guys playing off the outside foot. Don't cross over. At the same time, the nose is right over the knees, the nose is right over the toes. Okay, motor release, the first thing we teach. Now, what's the mirror motor release? You know, there's bump and run to where you're going to get up in his face, and you're going to hit him, and you're going to run with him. There are receivers in this conference, receivers that I've faced over the years, that every time you can't get up and strike him and hit him. We use that as a change-up. So we start off with teaching what we call a motor technique, which is a six-inch step. Six-inch step, uh, if I could get my coach here to demonstrate with me, he'll play wide out, I'll play receiver, the ball's inside there. Now, as you teach this, a lot of guys make mistakes, and even my young guys will come in, and they want to get right up in the face. I think it's important that you start off, especially dealing with the skill level of the athletes you're dealing with, that you start off and give yourself some distance. But what the motor technique is, is we ask them to put their feet parallel, right up under the armpits, and we're going to take six-inch steps backwards. All we're doing is when he moves, again, my eyes are on his waist, down to his knees. When that flinches, we're going to motor back six inches. At the same time, staying down, staying square, eyes are down. Now, whatever side he releases to, Coach, if you can back up just a step, whatever side he releases to, the ball's in there, all I'm trying to do is mirror the release and staying in front of him, not letting him get even. So as I six inch back, as he goes outside, I'm going to open up to the side that he releases. Now, there's some things we teach with arm coming back. As the arm comes back, your head better shoot back. But at the same time, you have to be able to turn your body running that way. Now, what you'll see the guys doing on tape right now to start off with is they'll motor and they'll release and they'll just open up, getting the hips used to opening up, staying in front, and being able to run. That's the first phase of it, motor release. So look at the tape. You'll see this young man motor back, good stance. Look at his head. His eyes are down. Now, this release doesn't mean inside or outside. There is no, they're mirroring the release. Now, all the things that happen right here, all the things that happen when the hips turn open, okay, 
This has to be trained every single day. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no set rule as to how you open your hips. A defensive back's athletic ability has to come out, but you can see this young man here open the hips, eyes are down, in position to run. A different, and guys are all different. You can see his steps are a little bit sloppy, but he's still inching out. He had a real, a real good understanding of being able to keep his body in front of the man. If you can keep your body in front of the man, that's what the motor is. If you can keep your body in front of him, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, there is no route. There is no route. Really good job there. You can see all of them, their eyes are down. The, now, as you're working on this, as you're working on this with your players, make sure that what the receiver does is just as important. The receiver has to play wide out. Okay, These are our DBs. They have to play wide out. So you, as you inch out, if the receiver comes off and just clowns around and doesn't give you a look, you're not getting a look. So make the wide out do it. Make him understand that he's trying to make the DB better. Eyes are down. Whichever side the release is, you're going to open up to that side, and you're going to try to take your body and run down inside and keep your eyes on his belt buckle on his knees. You'll understand in a few, few, in a few minutes why. Nice motor. Again, you can see the hips open. Watch his body come to cut him off. Good example right here of the eyes down. The eyes are down. The eyes are down. Now, some guys are good at using their hands. Some guys are good at using their feet and their eyes. But the one thing in common, the side that the hips and knees open to, it tells you where to take your body. You can see we're working on the line. We're working right down the line, a lot of reps. This young man likes using his hands. Long arms. You can see him, I call him the karate guy, karate chop. But look at the eyes down. Eyes are down. He can motor out and punch at the same time, which is really good. Now, the next phase of it is, is that we have to be able to teach the guys that whatever side, whatever side the receiver opens up to, I always say the opposite arm has to come up. So if the receiver goes to my left, Okay, if he goes to my left, I have to be able to open up to this side. And as I open up, as he closes the cushion, my arm comes up, thumb up, head as you go back. Why is that important? If you don't teach them that, they'll lean forward. And as they lean forward, they'll lose their man. Head and eyes have to go back, arm stiffens out. We don't punch down, we punch up, thumb up. But we have to be able to do this at the same time with opening up our hips and still doing what? Still being to run on top. Now, what this is, is to teach opposite arm, opposite leg. So I tell our wide outs, or our DBs who are playing wide out, to open up and go to the left for, at a 45 for a few steps, to the right at a 45. So what it does, it teaches them to come here and to flip their eyes, head and eyes, at the same time flipping their hips, and their eyes are down, but teaching them the, the proper arm that comes up with the release. Now we throw this in sometimes. I like this, I like to do this with the young guys, because what it was, what happens is, is that, is that they're in position, they're in position where it's hard to put the opposite arm up to the side that they're going. So this is just teasing. Here's a good job of this young man keeping his head and eyes down. It's a little bit out of order, but what we're going to teach next, the next phase of it is when you play bump, when you play press, when you're in a receiver's face, the, the, the offensive coaches always look at it and say, hey, we can beat you on the fade ball. So I, I move from the release to the outside release fade. A couple of things are important. Same thing. The receiver, you're going to motor out. He's going to release outside. Come on with me, coach, real quick. That's the ball's inside. I'm going to open up right here. He opens up outside. I'm going to turn here, and my eyes are down. As I start to run with him, as I start to run, and we're even, once I get in this position, once I know that the ball, and he's on a fade course, his hips stay in the same mode. His hips don't drop. You'll understand hip drop in a few minutes. The key here is to shoot your arm through and leg through and get your eyes on the quarterback and lean and press, and you become the wide receiver. 
I always tell our guys this. We've got every right to the ball, and if our head is turned back, if our head is turned back, then they'll always have the opportunity to get the ball, and usually nine times out of ten, you won't be called for pass interference. So here's the outside release. Now, I want you to see the hips. The hips have not dropped. If he was going to make, if he was going, if he was going to make a break, the hips would drop. So you can see this young man here, outside release. Now watch how quick the head gets around. Head gets around and you lean. And now we throw the ball. We want the ball caught at its highest point. Head and eyes down, six-inch motor, outside release. Watch him take his body to cut him off. Take his body. It's very important that you as a coach, that you as a coach throw the ball or have the ball thrown. If you can't throw it, have a quarterback there, have a – Somebody there that can throw the ball. So at all times, they'll be playing the fade ball or playing the takeoff route. Again, you can see the quickness of getting your head around. Hip drop. If a receiver is running forward and he's released on the route, the hips stay the same. As a receiver is going to make his break, whether it's an out, whether it's a curl, whether it's a comeback, whether it's a dig, as he's sprinting, the hips have to drop. So the next thing after the fade ball is teaching a young man that when the hips drop, the key to playing this coverage, the key to being able to be talented enough to be a great cornerback or to be a great DB to play bump and run is to understand that when the hips drop, how quick can you stop? So we talked about the shuffle drill, planting off the outside foot, okay? We talked about the mirror release, motor, mirror, release. You're running with him. You got the fade stop. What's going to happen when the receiver drops the hips down and is he going to turn inside or out? So what this drill does is I teach hip drop. I teach hip drop, and you can see right here, and I teach stutters. So you can see we're working on the hip drops right here, but when the hips drop, you got to slow down with him. At the same time, we're teaching the stutter. So if you get caught in a stutter and go. Now, the last phase of it is finishing it out, and if the hips drop, I want you to be the wide out. You have to be able to sink your hips and turn and plant. And what this does is when you get into your meeting, you show your players, for you to be able to make that break, you got to drop your hips. And we train it, and we train it, and we train it. At the same time, we, I want these guys always to play wide out. Now, let's look at this. I'm working, working on the outside of the cone. So if the quarterback's over here, you're working on, the, on what happens on a curl. The quarterback's over here, you're throwing an out or a comeback. So we work the right side of cone, work the left side of cone, knowing which foot to plant off of. Now, here's a good one because this, this young man plants off the wrong foot. You got to take the extra step, puts his hand on the ground. That isn't good. What I like about it, why this zone here is because watch the catch he makes. Now, these are defensive backs, and you don't see many, many, many balls drop. Your wide outs, your DBs have to be in position to where they understand that they got to be able to catch the ball better than a wide receiver. Here we go again. We're on the other side of the cone. Sometimes I'll change it up to where I'll just let them start, and I'm just working on them running a route, a dig route or a comeback route or an out route. Depends on what side, but I work on them, and if you see it, the hips do what? The hips drop. So what this does is it'll show our guys, it'll show our players that when the hips drop, we got to be able to drop. we got to be able to stop. Everything's worked on the line. Again, working to stutter with it. A lot of times when you're in bump and run coverage, on the stutter and go route, they're going to always try to get you to stop quick. I tell our guys, if the hips drop and they come back up, get ready to accelerate and play. Now, here's just a true stutter and go. Corner's got to be able to handle this. So what happens is there's a quarterback over here. He gets an outside release, stutter, and go. The corner does a good job of stopping, starting, and the same thing on the fade ball. Watch him get his head around. 
Get your head around and play. Not bad. Again, handling the stutter. And you can see every defensive back is still on top of the man. Everyone is still on top of the man. Head, head around as quick as you can. And you can see we work both sides. Head around. Good picture here of the eyes down. He knows right now it's a stutter and go. Head around. And you know what? Go play wide out. Go catch at his highest point. Head around. Go play wide out. Now what we're going to do, we're going to look at a few routes. We're going to look at a few routes. The, court, the ball is on the inside here. We're going to use some motors. We're working against our wide outs. We're going to motor this thing out. We're looking at the hips and thighs. I tell them two things. When the release is inside, if the release is inside, you have to be in a position where you teach your defensive backs the depths of curls. My guys know the curls are thrown anywhere between 10 to 15 yards. They know the digs are broken up 12 to 15 to 17, pushing inside. They know corner routes on the inside release is going to push to 10, and it's, they're coming over the top of you at 10 yards. If you teach them those three things, they already have learned the fade ball. If you teach them on an the inside release, what's going to happen when the receiver, if he's past 10 yards, there is no curl. The more he goes inside, is it a dig? Is it an in route? So... On an inside release, on an inside release, I tell our guys to lean like crazy. So there's the motor, there's the inside release. Now, take your body and lean. Now, as we work against our players, we are in no gear. We don't have on pads. We don't tackle each other, so we work together with the wideouts, which is really important, but that's perfect. He knows right now what the route is and playing it really good. That's excellent right there. Inside release, press against him. Lean and go play it. Nice right there. Shows it from another angle. You can see the stem inside. Look at the eyes down. Look at the body go press. Now what will happen here is with pass rush, whether it be a pressure, whether it be a man, when we play this technique, we have sometimes a whole player here, but we always have a deep free safety. That's why they know that their help deep, their help is inside deep, at all times. So on the inside release, they can press because on the inside release, if he runs a post route, it's running right into a free safety. That's what allows you to go ahead and play it. But excellent job right there. Let's look at the next route. Inside release, a little shallow though, right? He's going inside at five yards. Now watch his hips. Watch his hips drop. Make sense? Now watch him come, come under control when the hips drop. Perfect. So this allows you to cover a shallow cross a fake shallow and thing back out. Excellent job right there. Excellent job of being in position. Again, watch his hand come up to knock it off. Nice. Eyes still are down at the hip drop. Now, on any shallow, on anything that drags right now, we tell our guys to close on it right now. So that starts shallow. So he's headed to close. The hips drop. And this is excellent because how quick can you come in control when the hips drop? Okay. Here's a good picture because you say, what happens on a takeoff route? Ball's in here. He's released outside. Poor motor. If he's even, he's usually leaving. So what do you do? He's running away from the free safety. So what has to happen is I tell our guys, that when you're beat, you keep running until you can put your hand on them. Now, this guy has great speed. After you can put your hand on them, you get your head back as quick as possible, and you become the wide receiver. That's, what those deep, that's, why the, that's why the ball drills are so important. You become the wide receiver, and you lean toward the boundary, and if you lean toward the boundary, most wide outs won't catch the ball. But here's an example. Now, let's say that he stays in that position. We'll run toward the screen. Quarterback's back over here. If I'm lost, and as he reaches for the ball, I just want to play right through his hand. I want to play right through his hand and turn one away. So if I can get in position to touch him, shoot it, run, and lean, head back. If I can't, if I can't and I'm catching up, as he reaches out, 
You play through his hands. You play through his hands, see if he can catch you with one arm. See if he can catch you with one arm. Same thing here. You can see the motor part is poor, not bad, but the receiver gets a great jump. Just both these two can run. So he knows right now the hips hadn't dropped. So he knows I'm beat. If he's even, he's leaving. Okay, now let me go run to catch up. Do I got him? Now, what's telling him right now the receiver's looking for the ball? His head's back. But he's still doing what? He isn't reaching yet. So if he feels like that I can catch him and lean, how quick, how natural can your athlete get his head around and become the wide out and play the ball? Okay, here we go again. Got an inside release. So what, is, what, what should happen? Lean, lean. Now here's an example of what a wide out does because he understands what you, what him leaning. So who's taking the aggressiveness to who? The wide out's taking it to us. That's why I tell our guys, take your body and you lean against him. Pat on the pat and you lean. And as he leans, if he pushes off, it ought to be, if you're leaning the right way, it's going to pull you right there with it. Not bad, it can be better. You can see here the wide out taking the hit to us. I like taking it to him. Okay, so here we go. Let's watch another inside release. There's a, good, there's a good lean. Now, what's important? You say, why do you lean? You can lean so much, and they come inside sometime to run the corner route. Here's what I tell them on the corner route. All corner routes have to come over the top. If he's stemming you inside to get you to jump and he wants to run an out, your body ought to be at an angle to where he's got to run the out directly through you. So here's a good picture. Inside release, lean. Receiver's trying to come back outside. He can't get, get back out. You guys are coaches or players, and you understand the route, the play is over. The play is over right now. He'll never get the ball thrown to him. It's a good, good job right there on an inside release. Motored, inside, aggressive on the lean. If he runs an out, he's got to run it back through you. If he runs a corner route, I want him going over the top. If he presses against you to lean, you're leaning against him to come off and play. Excellent right there. Okay. Open the gate a little bit too much. But it's still an inside release, right? So do what? Go lean. Now, where's his help? His help's right here. So if your help, if your help is inside of you deep, if I'm playing corner and the help, I've got a post player right there and I lean. I'm not in a hurry to be on top of it anymore because if he runs deep, he's running right into a free safety just reading the quarterback. But if he turns and comes out, he's got to come out through me. If he goes in, I'm pushing off of him. If he's going to run a corner route, I want him to go over top of me that way, which makes the free safety be able to get a better break reading the quarterback. So right now, here's an example. Inside, corner route's the hardest to complete. Goes over the top. Make him make the catch. You can see here's a good job, ball thrown, watch your arm come up, turn arm away. And again, one of the hardest routes to complete on air, and at the same time, with the DB still running the rim. Does a good job of making him run over the top. Here he goes to lean, because he feels a post stem, right? He feels a post, he doesn't feel a dig. So you can see him pushing the post, push right to the post. Receiver runs a corner route, make him run it over the top of you, make them complete the ball between you and the wide receiver. Okay? New things that wide receivers are doing now on shallow crosses. They're coming in and they're looking at you. It's a pretty good thing. Receivers are looking, and as they look you in the eye, they're looking you in the eye to take you back forward. Okay, now... Not bad, except for what I said, on a shallow cross, go close to his hip. So don't let the look throw you off. Go close to that hip and go play it again. It looks real good in pass scale. The offensive line's here. He'd have to throw that right through. A, right, it looks like it's going to go right through that right tackle's butt. So I don't know if that's really a complete. Looks real good in, 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 uh, in this. I hope our D-line will bat that one down. So what I'm trying to show you right here is there's a motor. There's a hop inside. Go close. Go close. Nice right there. 
Excellent. Excellent. Okay, here we go. Outside release. Playing a little bit harder. Nice speed. Outside release. Is he running the fade? Is he running the fade? Look at the hips. The hips drop. The hips drop. We know that's not a fade. Hips drop. How quick when he stops can we, can, can we stop? It's one of the best receivers here in making his comeback routes look like he's run the fade route. Does a good job of reading it. You can see him taking the body on top to play it aggressive. See the hips drop, come under control, and again, comeback routes are like fade balls. If they can complete the ball on that sideline, you let them complete the ball on the sideline. But not bad, wide release outside. So we talked about the inside release. On a wide release, go run to meet him at the junction. And when you run to meet him at the junction, you meet him aggressively. So you see this young man, watch him going to meet him. Meet him aggressively. Squeeze it. Stop when he stops and see if they can complete it. Nice there, inside release. Should lean, go lean. Nice. Got a little grab, got a little grab, but sometimes that happens. Not bad because he's running the post right into who? Right into the free safety or the dig. Not bad. And again, it's sometimes these 16, 18 yard digs, you may not have the safety help. But if we lean and squeeze, watch him take his body. He can take his body in front. He can take him in front or he can take it behind. It depends on how it plays out to see if he can still make the catch. Now, let me talk about one thing while we're here. I'll go through this at the end with our diagram. If a receiver is outside the numbers, I call it a wide split. If a receiver is outside of the numbers, I call it a wide split. If he's inside of the numbers, it's a tight split. So on wide splits, you think inside route. On tight splits, you think fade routes and comeback. If he's in the numbers, that's normal. And on a normal split, we play him head up. On an, out, on an inside split, we're going to think a little bit more fade ball or a shallow cross maybe. Shallows, we don't have to cover. If he's in tight, think fade. If he's out wide, he's going to push you up here to run a curl. He's going to push you in here to run a dig. Is he going to push you up the field 10 yards to run a post? All those, all those things are important. So splits mean something. You know the quarterbacks that you're playing against. Understand what's important, what he's trying to run. In the face, we're playing it a little bit more aggressive. Not bad. He's in a he's in a normal split, and he releases outside. Now, you know can he complete the fade? But then you're looking at his hips. You see the hips drop. Come under control. Nice. Now, we know on the outside release, on a normal split on the numbers, there is no room. To run, a fade, to run an out route, okay? It's got to be a little tighter. So sometimes they try to line up normal, outside release you outside to run an inside cut. So if you see the hips drop, you know what it is. You know it's a curl. Nice right there. Really nice. And again, we always talk about curl routes are somewhere around 10 to 15. This is about 11 yards. It works out the same. And all those or what's important in trying to educate your players as to what routes they're going to see. Half, a lot of it's athletic ability, uh, but a lot in talent, but there's so much into understanding the receiver's demeanor, what the quarterback's doing, how wide his split is, what routes do they run in certain formations, that I've had a 4-7, 4-8 safety or corner be able to play bump and run because he understands that. Now, if you got one that's 4-4, four, 4-3, four, 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 5 that's even better. But understanding his demeanor, where he's lying, what is the release looking like. Now, in the SEC, in the SEC receivers can't go off uh, snap count. The crowds are too loud. You can't hear it. So the eyes have to turn into the ball. So every week, I think it's important that you look that you look and see what stance the receiver is in. If his eyes are turned in, I wouldn't show the technique until I knew he was looking at the ball. Okay? So if we were playing against 
a team and it, the receiver comes out and he's looking straight in my face. He's looking down for his reading coverage. If I'm playing bump and run, I'm not going to show bump and run. I'm not going to give it to him right now. I may be five yards off. I may have a safety showing a cover two look, making him think, hey, I, I got a guy behind him. Or you may be seven yards off, making him think he's covered three. The more he gets set, the quarterback's getting the clocks running down, you'll see the hand coming in the stands, and you'll see his eyes turn inside to the ball. When his eyes turn inside to the ball is when we show the technique, whether we're going to play bump and run or we're going to play motor. Okay, now, we're going to play a little bit more aggressive now. We take the motor out. Uh, again, this tape is teaching uh, motor technique. I threw a little bit of more aggressive stuff in, just so you can see a little bit. You can see the head come in. He looks in. There's the ball right here. He takes his attention. We can use a jab aggressively right there and get off and run, which is what this young man does. Punches, goes and squeezes again. Go inside, go take your body to him and lean. So you can see the receiver has advantage right now. Watch him sprint to go lean. And again, we know this is slant. Now, here's where this is good pass scale and good good, good one-on-one uh, -on -one work is who's usually standing in here on the defense? The linebacker. So my guys really should be thinking they're going to get a fade route. Because if he runs a slant, he's running right into a linebacker. They don't do it. They wide it out to run slants. But we do play the game and have to understand it. But this is a good job of closing. Watch him take his hand to tear away an arm. Excellent right there. Accelerate in. Okay, a little bit aggressive here. Punch, nice. We get an outside release, right? Got him jammed. Lean and press. Lean and press. Excellent right there. Excellent. Now, you know what this young man knows? Look at the numbers. The split is inside the numbers. It's inside for him to run an outside fade route. So what this DB is doing is he's shading it slightly inside to throw him off, but plays him hard jammed outside, and now he's going to keep pressing. He knows not a fade route. The guy be running and you press it on out of bounds in position to play the outer comeback. And again, I know you may be saying, boy, he's holding, he's holding, he's holding. Well, in one-on-one, -on -one, it sometimes happens that way. I do believe this. If you're teaching bump and run a press man, you're going to get a few pass interference penalties. But what is important is that you teach them to not play downfield, not to grab, not to hold, but at the same time, Know that on outside release is what the route is. Know on inside release is what the route is. And know that if they do get a pass interference penalty, it's important that you don't continue to beat them up. You can make them scared to play. You can make them scared to play. I think last year we had, in all the man coverage we played, I think we had three pass interference penalties all year attributed to, to bump and run. That's not bad with all the times we were put in bump and run. Playing aggressive again, eyes are down, really nice. So you see what happens. You see, his, you see his head turn in. So this defensive back right now, you can see him walk up. He's really off. The head turns in. He sneaks up, and instead of motor in it, he plays aggressive. The play's over. There is nobody to throw to. There is nobody to throw to. All that has to be part of your repertoire. It has to be has to put you in a position to where you teach your players what it is. But again, it takes patience. Been a little bit smart. You can see him coming up right now. Quarterback's already giving him the route. Aggressive, not motored. And that would have been real good if you'd have motored out. It had been a nice release. You have to change it up with sometimes being hard and sometimes being soft. Here's a bluff. Faking the punch. Motoring out. Hips are down. Do the hips drop? The hips drop. Stop the inside route. Okay. 
Here's an outside release wide. We're playing this aggressive. Now, we're not motored anymore. He's punching. Outside release, remember we talked about. Play him hard. Play him aggressive. Go play him aggressive. Watch, watch Tim's hips. Another indicator is when they pump the arms. Look at the arms pump. When the arms pump fast, the hips are dropping, how quick can you stop? And then make them complete the route on the sideline. Also, keep your DBs off the sideline, too, so you won't get anybody hurt. Real confident with his speed. Again, there's some good shots of watching these guys pump their arms and the hips drop, and you know when to stop, which is the key, being able to stop when they stop. Here we go. Going to play it aggressive. Fakes outside, fakes in. Nice punch. It's over. It is over. If your defensive line into the quarterback by this time, if they still got a chance to come off all this and throw the ball, you better talk to those four or five guys that's rushing the quarterback. That's perfect. And again, we do have a free safety middle of the field. Good example. Don't want to bump him, but he's beat. Look at the hand when he reaches. Take an arm through that hand. Wouldn't want to play it a little bit. Wouldn't want to play it quite that aggressive. But again, inside release, the jab comes up trying to play it hard. Tries to come back out, jab back out, turn and lean. It should be over. You've eliminated the route, eliminated the wide out. Okay, here we go. Inside release, motor lean. Nice right here. This is the same young man earlier that you saw in practice to where he wasn't in position. He didn't play the wide out aggressive. Watch him here, lean. Punching and leaning. Aggressive. Again, he presses off to come back in. I always say that if they got a chance to do all this route and go from in and out, something's wrong too, but not bad. He should catch the ball. Good. A nice fake punch again. We're faking it as if we're punching. Receiver releases inside. Go lean. You're running them right to a free safety. Free safety hopefully break it on the ball. Again, you're never in trouble on this cross the field stuff if you take your body and you lean. What I don't like here is that we got him right there. We got the hand on him. Take your body into him to play him more aggressive. Okay, a nice inside jam here. Again, I'll let them switch it up. Sometimes we'll play it aggressive two hands. Sometimes we'll play it outside. Sometimes we'll play it inside. The aggressive part is thrown off. Again, the key is don't get up and show them totally what you got until you see them in a stance and their eyes are inside. Comes up right now with an inside punch. Go run, look at the hips. A little stutter, right? You say, boy, the hips dropped right quick. There is no route where the hips drop at four to five yards, you need to play. Hips drop at four to five to six to seven yards, you play the stutter, make him complete the hitch. Go take your body and cut him off. Watch him go cut him off. To take off route, cut him off, turn, lean, eyes and head are back. You play wide out. Excellent right there. You tell me if you lean, where is he running? He's running out of bounds. It's got to be thrown perfect. Again, good inside jam. Don't play the stutter because it's at five. Go take your body aggressively in front of it. When your head is in that position and you're playing wide out, I have never been called for pass interference with the head and eyes back. Okay, two-hand aggressive right now. Snuck up. Staggered our stance. Went to parallel. Squeezed it. Played him aggressive. Hopefully right now it's over. Good job of trying to tear away the top side shoulder. You can see him change from the going stance where it looks like he's going to knock him out to two hands. Again, this is that same shuffle being able to move sideways with him. That's a real good job. Again, slants. Remind your corners the slants are played and helped by linebackers on three-step drop. Here we go. Planted aggressive here. 
several different ways you can see the guys. A little bit wider base gets caught, but has a great awareness of being able to jam aggressively and still mirror. Now, this should be over. If you can stop this route and pause it, and you say by the time your D lineman can get it cranked up, hopefully you'll have it again. Lean against him because it turns back to inside. Not bad at all. Again, we're too early in our stance, right? Now, you can see what happens. He knows it's an inside route by the alignment. Coached up by the coach here saying, well, you're giving it to him right now. Let's go ahead and tighten it down. He still plays it the same way. Okay, here we go. Here's another motor technique on an outside wide release. Outside wide alignment. Way outside the numbers. Don't let him run an inside route. Way outside the numbers. Don't let him run an inside route. Inside route. Now, lines up outside to run a fade. Do the hips. The hips don't drop. Take your body and cut him off and lean. Get your head around. All those drills that you saw at the beginning. All those drills that you saw are coming into play. Again, play the inside route. Okay, trying to do the on the, do they have enough room to complete it? Can they keep it on the map? There's a prime example. Head around, can they keep it? I got this, I got this outside stripe here. Because I tell the guys, anything that they're running outside here, if they can hit, they're a real, they got a really good quarterback. Plan it aggressive, gets caught on an aggressive hit, inside move, on an inside route, inside stem. You don't have to play the post route. You can get beat deep because you have a free safety. So I'd like for him sort of to go lean a little more, watch the hips, and go drive it. Again, we also have a coverage where there's a whole player short and a whole player deep. just depends on what we got. Receiver does a good job of slinging aggressive to get the hands off. That's what we can't have. we got to jab a little harder through that if we're going to play them aggressive. If we think they're playing it this way, we better motor and go close on that. Ah, uh, caught us off sides. Does a good job of sneaking up when the head comes in. Same cruise route. Again, they're, they're throwing the ball through this imaginary offensive line, and I think we've got a couple of linebackers coming down reading it, seeing it. Okay, inside release. Nice patient. Watch your shuffle step. Yep. Go lean and press. Go lean and press. There it is. There it is right there. If he's running a post route, he's got help. Nice. Excellent job right here. Watch him play through the hand. If you tear a hand away, if you tear one hand away or one arm away, it's usually difficult for him to catch the football. Good. Nice right here. Learn from last time, trying to get thrown past. Watch. Takes the arm away. You see the left arm? He kicked out last time, takes the arm away, stays balanced, now go lean. Excellent right there. Really good. Really good. I want him staying off the ground. Okay. Plan a Z receiver. See how far he's backed off the ball. Sometimes they won't let you get it in their face. Nice. Shuffle, eyes down, go lean. Corner route, corner route's good because he has to do what? Runs over the top, make him throw the ball between me and the wide out, see can they make it, free safety's in here, ought to see the shoulder turned outside, and the free safety ought to be running right now to go try to make that play over the top. You see him right here making him throw the ball in between, and again, one of the hardest routes to complete. Okay, you heard me talk a lot about splits. Uh, I know some of you are high school coaches. Uh, 
the college hash and numbers are different than high school. I'm going to tell you what we teach and how I teach it to our defensive backs to keep it simple, which is, which is important. You know, you say, boy, you hear a lot of things about splits. What I'll tell our guys is this. When the ball is on this hash, and I'm on the defensive side, so I'm on this side looking at our offense this way. When the ball is on the defensive hash and there's a receiver split, I use the numbers. And what that means is that if the receiver is anywhere in here on the numbers, he's put himself in position to where he can run, he can do several things. He's in position to where he still can run a curl, he still can run a comeback, he still can run a post. The wider he gets outside the numbers, he's now taken the sideline away. So most of the time when a receiver is out wide, outside the numbers, balls on his hash, and he's outside the numbers, and again, 70 plus percent uh, of the game is played on the hash, then we know that he's opening it up to run some type of inside route to take care of this field. Make the quarterbacks that you face have to play out here. So what we may do there is I may take our defensive back and I may take him, and on that wide split, rather than playing him head up, I may go with my outside foot, splitting his crotch to the inside in the same stance, but I'll let him know that you don't have an inside cut, and I'm going to make him. You're playing, you may play against some quarterbacks that can't throw the fade route. They can't throw the ball up here, but they can sure throw a slant. They can sure throw a curl. Well, the tighter they get, the tighter they get inside the numbers, there is no slant room. What are they, where are they throwing a curl? They're throwing where all the linebackers are set, where all the linebackers are dropping to, okay? Where a whole player may be, a whole player may be. So understand this, whether you're playing man or zone, whether you're playing, this may be three deep. I teach the same rules in three deep. If the receiver's out wide, it's going to be some type of inside cut. The receiver's in tight, he's in tight for a reason. He's in tight to run a fade route if you're, if you're playing press man. He's in tight if you're playing off to run a speed out, okay? The wider he gets, if you're off, he can, get, he can maybe get a hitch, but he's widened out to run a slant. All those things are important. You say, well, coach, what happens when the ball is off the hash about three yards? I tell our guys, do you treat the numbers, and if he's off three yards, you're dead in the middle of the numbers. Anything wider than that, anything wider than that is a wide split. Anything tighter than that is a tight split. Again, if we're close to the hash, three to four yards in the hash are treated as ball on the hash. As the ball moves to the middle, I use the numbers completely. This is just me studying over the last several years as the were receivers line up. Receiver coaches will line their guys up based on usually numbers outside, inside. So in the ball to the middle, I tell them the same thing. If he's inside the numbers, we're going to make that an even split. Anything tighter, he's giving himself some room. Anything wider, it's hard, but you make sure that you take care of any inside cut. So splits are important. Let's take the corner or the defensive back to the wide side of the field. Ball on the hash right here. Receiver lines up here. I tell them a normal split is the split the difference between the far hash and the numbers. So if a receiver lines up like right in the middle there, you treat it as normal, head up. Anything wider, get inside, take away the inside, make them throw it there. Anything tighter, he's in position to run a comeback route, to run a fade route. So those are the split rules that we teach, and it's, you, you can't go over it just one time. We talk split rules in the spring. We, talk, we teach them, and we talk about it during two days. We talk about it during the season. And again, as they sit in your room, and if they're ninth graders or if they're freshmen, the more they hear, the more they understand. I had guys that couldn't even begin to tell you about a split as freshmen, and they may not have to tell you a little bit as sophomores. By the time they were juniors, they really understood it. I also had guys that came in and understood a wide split 
And it was a Y split. I'm not going to let him complete it inside. And they knew it as freshmen. Let's talk about indicators. You hear me talk about a free safety or a middle hole player. When we're playing bump and run coverage, and we got that outside leverage, a lot of times there's a linebacker that plays in the hole. We'll, we'll rush four guys, so there'll be a shallow hole player and a deep post player. Okay, there's some clues, there's some indicators that we read whenever we're playing. Whenever you're playing a hole coverage, meaning the linebacker's going to drop to the hole, and the free safety's going to run to the middle, and those corners know that I can let that release inside because i got a guy here mirroring the quarterback. We read the quarterback's indicators. Okay, we do, we read his indicators in zone coverage. What are the indicators? First thing is where's the quarterback looking? Says he's down his stance, whether he's in the gun or in the center. Where are his eyes? I was told a long time ago that as a quarterback drops back to pass, you can cut off half the field as to where he's looking and where his front side shoulder is. Okay, that doesn't mean you go run and leave your zone. So if I'm the free safety, I work to the middle of the formation. As the quarterback drops, Back here, as the shoulder's pointing here, he's looking straight at him, staying your pedal. If the shoulder's up, he's coming with a post route. If the shoulder's up and outside, he's usually throwing a corner route or the outside third fade. If the shoulder's up outside, corner route or outside third fade. What is the free safety looking at? I'm in my pedal, shoulder goes outside, I'm going to turn, I'm going to use my athletic ability, and I'm going to turn, I'm a zone turn, man turn, any turn that you've taught. Whether you've taught him as he receives on the inside, turn this way, turn into. But you're going to open up and you're going to turn to the quarterback, to the side he's looking, and you're going to go play the ball in there. The deep safety has the click he didn't indicators. Where's the shoulder? Where's the front side shoulder? The shoulder's down, and I'm the hole player. And I'm the linebacker, and I drop in the hole. I believe in setting my feet when the quarterback sets his feet. So if you if you set when the quarterback sets, and you read his shoulder, if the shoulder's pointing this way, and you start working, you're working into that slant that he's pushing in. You're working into that dig that he's pushing in. You see the quarterback and what he's looking at. If the quarterback's shoulders are flat, he's in the hook and curl area. Or straight ahead, he's in the hook and curl area. Hook and curl area. If his shoulders turn flat, he's throwing a flat route. I always say that flat routes versus pass rush are help covered by your defensive ends or outside backers getting up the field rushing the quarterback. So the inner case is important. Where is he looking? As he drops back, where is his front side shoulder? The shoulder's up, he's throwing deep. The shoulder's up, he's throwing deep. He's throwing deep. The shoulder's in here, he's throwing hooks and curls. The shoulder turns sideways, he's throwing the ball to the flat. Now, what's next? When the arm comes off the ball, I tell our guys he's ready to throw it. So if I'm that whole linebacker or I'm that inside linebacker making my drop and I'm keying the quarterback, whether it be in a two deep or whatever, as the arm comes off the ball and where the shoulder is, we want to make that break flat right there to go play the ball, to go catch the ball. If I'm in the secondary and I'm playing a third or I'm playing a half, I make the break when the ball is released. I tell our free safeties in man coverage, bump and run. When you see the shoulder, you start anticipating it, and as the arm comes off and he's about to release, you start heading to that outside third because where the quarterbacks will try to beat you in bump and run most of the time is to the wide outs deep, not post routes, to the wide outs deep. So I work those free safeties all the time and send indicators. Watch your front side shoulder. If it's up, he takes the arm off the ball, you better start breaking, and you find a free safety that can be nosed up on the ball, that can see the quarterback look either way, can open up at a 45, and has got speed and can go run and get that thing and get that ball thrown in the air. Okay, in closing, let me just cover what we've talked about earlier. First of all, the most important drill that we start off with every day is the shuffle drill. The shuffle drill teaches uh, your young athletes or our young athletes how to plant off the proper foot, barely graze the grass, but being able to plant, stand in a football position, nose over your toes, bend in the ankles and the knees, but being able to plant off the outside foot, all the things that you need. Defensive backs have to be able to move laterally, they have to be able to plant and change, and it has to be done on a reaction. Receivers make you react. So I always use a ball to play wide out to move them in the shuffle. What's next? Understanding the motor, 
how to motor out, how to inch out, six-inch steps, stand down. Eyes are on the belt buckle and thighs. Why? Because the hips and knees turn outside. Shoulders can do everything else. Hips and knees, if you stay in this area, belt buckle down to the hips, you'll see it open up outside. You'll see them open up to your right, open up to your left. The hip area also tells you what a receiver's doing. If you ever watched a sprinter, uh, I have a copy of a group running in a 100-yard dash, and I showed them the guys running 100, and we look at guys, and we said, look at them and watch your hips. You can see the hips are on a plane path, and they're sprinting their forms down. And then you say, guys, can they run that speed and at the same time stop and run a curl or run a out or run a comeback or break off and run a post? Easy to run a post. The hips have to drop and come under control. So therefore, we have to teach our players that when the hips drop, we have to drop. So it, there has to be a constant training of the hip action. What is the wide out doing? And, if, and as you move forward past that, as your guys mature, teach them the depths of routes. You know, a curl route can't be run at 20 yards. You know, a curl route can't be run at six yards. Uh, uh, I don't teach hitches because teams don't throw hitch routes in the press coverage. So if, if a guy stutters his feet at five to six yards, he's running a stutter and go. He's trying to take you out of it. If the hips drop 10 to 12, most of the time that's going to be curls or comebacks. So you know what the stem is. Understand that the hip area, when a receiver's hips drop, that receiver is coming under control to make a break to the outside or make a break to the left, make a break to the right, come back. Anything is thrown underneath, he's making that stem. So understand the hip drops are most important. Third, understand that when you're playing bump and run, if you understand the splits, and if you understand the splits and you understand that an over split is going to be an inside route and a tight split, most of the time it's going to be a fade ball because you're not going to throw comebacks and outs in the press coverage. That if you understand on the outside release and the hips are normal, if you can turn and understand, get your head around. Get your head around a position to where you lean and you fade and you play the quarterback as the ball is being thrown. Understanding, making a, having a general knowledge is so, so, so important in playing bump and run press coverage. As again, this tape dealt with press man coverage, motoring out. I showed a little bit of how you can play it aggressive. There are some techniques that we work when playing some aggressive stuff, but understand that if you can motor and keep your body between you and the receiver, and not let him upfield. The longer you can do that, you've eliminated his route. Hope you got some out of the, the video, and uh, if you get a chance, come visit us sometime. Thank you.